Whether or not you did your initial planning a day or two prior to your flight, now is the time to evaluate the weather. In a previous video, we showed you how to access the weather charts and how to interpret them. Today, I've prepared the weather package for you. Included is the METAR and TAF, the graphical area forecast, the upper winds or the FDs, SIGMETs and AIRMETs, and the NOTAMs. A good place to start with your weather evaluation is the METAR and TAF, remembering that we estimated our time of departure to be 1700 Zulu. First, let's look at the Springbank METAR. We see this one came out on the 27th day at 1400 Zulu. It is an auto observation showing the wind variable at two knots. The visibility is five statute miles in mist and the sky is clear. The temperature is minus six with a dew point of minus seven and the altimeter is three zero 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 inches of mercury. Record the pressure and temperature into the navigation log performance calculation section. Based on this current weather information, as a new VFR pilot with five miles in mist, I'd probably wait for the weather to get better. The good news is that's exactly what we have in mind anyways, since we need some time to plan. Let's see what the forecast looks like. The latest TAF for Springbank was issued on the 27th day at 11.38 Zulu. It is valid from 12 to 2400 Zulu on the 27th day. Initially, it shows a wind of 180 at eight knots in four miles of mist with broken ceilings at 600 feet. Add another layer of cloud overcast at 1200 feet. We aren't going anywhere with this weather. As we look forward, we see a tempo period from 12 to 1300 Zulu with an improvement of six miles in mist with scattered cloud at 600 feet and 1200 feet, then an overcast layer at 2500 feet. From 1300 Zulu, we see a marked improvement of wind at 220 at eight knots, plus six statute miles in visibility with scattered cloud at 1,500 feet and 8,000 feet. Another tempo period follows with broken cloud again, but from 1,600 Zulu, we see the improvement of wind showing 240 at 10 knots gusting to 20, plus six statute miles visibility, and clouds scattered at 8,000 feet. Looking further, we see the improved weather is sticking around. Assuming the wind is okay for you to go, we have a nice VFR weather day. Now let's look at the other end. So roughly estimating our aircraft will be flying at 110 nautical miles an hour for 53 miles, we see that it will take about 30 minutes to get to our destination. Adding on some time for start, taxi, run up, delays, we can assume that we would arrive in Red Deer anywhere from 1745 Zulu to 1800 Zulu. This gives us the approximate window we will be looking for for the arrival weather. Starting again with the METAR, we see that it was issued at 1400 Zulu on the 27th day. An auto observation of 190 at five knots for the wind with nine statute miles of visibility. The ceiling is overcast at 9,100 feet with a temperature of minus four degrees and a dew point minus five. The altimeter shows 3001. It's already VFR. Again, record the pressure and temperature into the navigation log performance calculation section. Referencing the TAF, we want to get an idea of what the weather has been doing and what it will be doing, not just at our arrival time, but before and after. We see here that the TAF was issued on the 27th day at 11.38 Zulu. It shows a period of 12 to 2400 Zulu with wind 180 at five knots, two statute miles, light snow showers, and a vertical visibility of 1500 feet. Hmm, not really VFR. The tempo period continues to show light snow and lower cloud. 
From 1400 Zulu, we see the ceiling and visibility pick up to 6 miles and 6,000 feet broken, but a tempo period following from 1400 to 1700 shows 3 statute miles and light snow. From 1700 Zulu, the wind shows 150 at 10 knots, plus 6 statute miles of visibility, and a broken ceiling of 6,000 feet. Remember that 6,000 feet is AGL, or above ground level. From 2000 Zulu, we see that the weather remains VFR. From the METAR and TAF at both airports, we see that the weather is supposed to improve in time for our departure. Because it will improve in Red Deer prior to our departure, I'm comfortable with making the trip. If we check the weather just prior to departing and we find out the Red Deer weather has not improved or the forecast is changed, we can always cancel the trip. Remember the old saying, it's better to be on the ground wishing you were in the air than in the air wishing you were on the ground. Now let's take a look at what we can expect en route. Looking at the GFA, we have three options, the 1200 Zulu, the 1800 Zulu, and the 000 Zulu. The clouds and weather 1200 Zulu chart shows an area of weather all around us and our route. The comment C shows 4000 to 5000 broken ceilings to 6000 with visibility plus 6 statute miles. There are patchy areas of mist and ceilings 1500 feet AGL until 1600 Zulu. We also see the trowel and front passing through which is the cause of all of this weather. Looking at the 1800 Zulu chart, we see an improvement in the weather. There is nothing of significant note between Springbank and Red Deer. The only thing to be concerned about here is that Red Deer seems to fall right in the bottom of the weather band associated with this warm front. Since we have already looked at the Red Deer TAF, we can see that this should not pose an issue. Because the 00 Zulu chart is so far outside of our arrival window, we really don't need to reference it at this time. Referencing the 1200 Zulu icing and turbulence freezing level chart, we see icing associated with the weather around Red Deer as to be expected by the weather on the previous chart. When we look at the 1800 Zulu chart, it looks a bit ugly. The icing won't be a concern, but we now see some turbulence. We see that the chart references moderate lee wave mechanical turbulence. The Springbank Airport sits just inside the referenced area. Does this mean that we can't go? Well, maybe. We can always look at the PIREPS, talk to other pilots who've been flying, or use some local knowledge to make our decision. This area is known to have lee wave mechanical turbulence due to its proximity to the Rocky Mountains. Because our flight is heading northbound and there are no reports of turbulence in the close proximity to the airport, we will make the decision to go. I will caution that in the real world situation, use your best judgment, follow your own personal limits, and don't ever let anyone pressure you into flying when you aren't comfortable doing so. Now there were no air mets or signets for this day, so now let's take a look at the upper winds. Finding our nearest station of Calgary, we look for the validity of the chart and the time we intend to use it. In our case, we will use the for use between 0900 and 1800 since we are planning to depart at 1700 Zulu. Our planned altitude is 7,500 feet, so we will need to interpolate between 6,000 and 9,000 foot numbers. Remember that the first two numbers of the sequence is the direction of the wind and the second two the velocity. The final two numbers is the outside air temperature. The 6,000 foot wind reads 290 at 23 knots with a temperature of minus 1 degree. The 9,000 foot wind reads 310 at 26 knots with a temperature of minus 9. 
since 7500 is halfway, we can interpolate the wind direction as 300 degrees, the wind velocity as 25 knots, and the temperature of minus 5 degrees. Enter this information into the navigation log on the set heading point to CYQF line. The final thing we need to look at is NOTAMs. For the sake of this exercise, we will say that we looked at the NOTAMs and found nothing of concern for our flight. I will recommend that if you need a refresher on how to read the NOTAMs or any of the weather products, please review the lessons and videos as required.